Marty, one of the things you you talk about in the book is this difference between uh, Western thinking and more Eastern thinking. And you you say that relying on our Western thinking as we read and interpret Scripture is like playing the song of Scripture with only one hand. I love that analogy. Can you explain what you mean to our audience? Yeah, there's a musical metaphor um, that I... I, I I grabbed early in the process and just loved. Like if anybody knows what it's like to play piano, I, I was a music major in college, at least one of my majors. And um, I was never very long for piano, but I took a couple years. And you learn to play piano and in your left hand, you're playing this bass chordal structure. It's really the foundation of the song. It's going to give your song all of its ba- uh, all of its all of its depth and its bottom color and its nuance and its movement. And in your right hand, you're playing what's really going to become the melody. Like that's where you're going to recognize the song. That's the beauty of the melody line. It's all. And putting these two hands together is what makes the song what it is. For me, that becomes the metaphor for Eastern versus Western perspectives and thought. The Bible's an Eastern book. It's got an Eastern perspective, Eastern authors, Eastern audiences, an Eastern world. And that's like the right hand. Like that's the melody. The Western perspective can come in and bring all kinds of depth and color. and But if we were to take the right hand away and tie it behind our back and simply play the left hand of the song, I don't think you recognize the song unless you have insider information. I don't think you even know what song's being played. You just hear these bass chords being played one after another. You don't hear the melody. You can't tell what the song is. And so you get the song all – you can – often get the song all wrong, no matter how beautifully or perfectly you play it or how hard you pound those bass chords into the piano, you're really going to miss the song that's being played. And now if all you had is the right hand, well, you might recognize the song, but it's not going to have the beauty of putting both hands together. But I do think what I love about that metaphor is it does put an emphasis on if we don't have some level of awareness that we're dealing with a different world, when we're reading the Bible, we're dealing with a different perspective. There's a good chance we may be even mishearing the song for what it is. So we need to have that level of awareness. It's not just equal and, a, and opposite. It, there really is two different parts being played. And realizing that is the foundation of beginning to ask better questions. Why do you think it's unavoidable that our own cultures and contexts will influence how we interpret scripture? And what's an example of how you see that playing out today? Yeah. So, and, and this is to, this is not a criticism. This is totally understandable. When we come to the scriptures, we come with our own context. We come with our own questions. We come with our own trials and, and struggles. We come with our own immediate things that we're trying to deal with and apply the gospel to. And so we read the Bible and it's very easy to very quickly take our context, our assumptions, our immediate situations and kind of push them onto and read the Bible through those conversations. So it's really helpful to just simply be aware of that. It's not a criticism like, why in the world do we do that? Of course we do that. Of course we do that. But if we can have an awareness of that, we take that immediate context that I'm living in, we put it on the shelf for just a moment so that I can go into the Bible and I can look at the conversation taking place between Paul and the church in Philippi or Moses and the audience in Deuteronomy or whatever those conversations might be so that I can understand that ancient conversation and it's inspired context. Once I understand that conversation, I now have this understanding, this um, exegetical principle, this application that now I take my immediate context, I take it off the shelf and I put them together and it gives me insight for what, what I'm supposed to do. How do I apply this thing that I'm learning into my immediate context? And you know, examples of this are just all around us, particularly in the sociopolitical situations that we find ourselves in, especially if we're Western or American context. I mean, we have all of these, these tribal categories and ways that we see things left and right, conservative and progressive, and we take all of our current sociopolitical situations and we immediately smash them onto the Bible that we're reading. Um And so then no matter what camp we're coming from, one side or the other, we end up filtering everything we read through the ideology that I'm already assuming when I read the scripture. And so to be able to, again, keep that on the shelf so I can see what's being said in that original conversation, that inspired God-breathed conversation, well, now I have the insight to go back to my original context and go, is there anything that I have to learn here? And, And typically the indication I've done this well is that it's provocative for all of us, myself included. It's 
when I apply it, I'm like, oh gosh, that is that's not that doesn't that isn't just aligned to this particular ideology or that particular worldview. This challenges all of us to be changed, transformed, look more like Jesus. Mm-hmm.